implied in the commandment. The issue of marriage. Honor thy father and thy mother. That's a marriage statement. And I will get into the non-spiritual, creative, inventive attempts of mankind to alter God's intent for marriage. Now, I got a call from someone this week, and let me clarify something. Next week is not going to be some gay bashing sermon. All the people on this planet were died for by Jesus. Amen. I will deal with simple biblical principles yes. about marriage. Yes. And in the process, yes, I will address the issue of gay marriage. But that is not an anti-gay issue. It's an anti-distort God's purpose for marriage yes. issue. We'll deal with that next week. Let's pray. Father, guide us now in thy word. In Jesus' name, <clears throat> amen. amen. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Such a simple word, isn't it? I, I am amazed at how human beings can take a simple word from God and recreate it into something that God never intended. Amen. Honor thy father and thy mother. And the benefit, your days will be long in the land the Lord gives. It, it's, 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 it, it would seem that it would be hard to distort that truth. But you would agree with me, would you not, as to the inventiveness of Satan? He has a plethora of ways to distort humankind. And he gets so much help from us. We provide Satan with daily assistance in our own destruction. It is amazing, is it not? The fifth commandment is the second of two commandments, only two, in the Bible that, in the Decalogue, that do not begin with a negative. Eight, thou shalt not. But two, fourth and fifth, uh, begin with the, with, the, with the affirmative. Un, uh, the, the affirmative imperative, I should say. Honor, remember. And it's always tempting for a preacher to get off on the thing that's not the issue. So why those two are that way, I, I will not follow up on that. But it is interesting. Remember and honor. Now to those of you listening to us for the first time or visiting for the first time, here's where we are with these commandments. We've learned that the commandments are about relationships. Relationships. We have learned that the commandments define sin. What do they do? Define sin. They define sin. We've learned that Jesus is the one who gave those Ten Commandments. He is the I Am on the Mount Sinai who gave those Ten Commandments. And therefore, we have presented from Scripture clearly that it would be then, therefore, innocuous, counterproductive to think that the Jesus who gave the commandments then came and did away with those commandments. In fact, he said very clearly, don't even think it. Didn't he say it? I read my Bible. Maybe you didn't read yours. I read mine. It said, don't think it, that I've come to destroy the law and the prophets, Matthew 5, 17 and 18. But rather, Jesus came up with an empowerment plan. He says, he says, 
uh, in your sinful state, you can't keep them, but I'm going to give you grace. Right. And old Carlson Griffith did a good job with that grace stuff the other Sabbath school lesson, didn't he? He pounded it in our brain. Grace is power, right. not just pardon. Now, isn't there something? God pardons you when you break the commandments and then empowers you not to break them again. Y'all too quiet for me. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise his holy name. So we've learned that from studying these commandments. We got that clear. Now, as we studied the four, here's kind of where we are. The first commandment we learned is the sin of replacing God with yourself. We found that the most dangerous false God in the life of Doug and Audrey Levison is Doug and Audrey Levison. Getting in God's way. Uh, you know, now you know sitting there all pious that the, most, that the most stupid things you've done in your life you did when you got in God's way. He said no, you said yes. Go on and say amen. amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or he said yes and you said no. He said yes. Marry that nice, quiet guy who's got a job. He said, no, I want tall, dark, and handsome over here. God said yes. To short and faithful. You said no. <laughs> and are you not in trouble? There he goes again, preaching two sermons at the same time. Yeah, we learned that. The second commandment we learned is the sin of having replaced God with yourself. Now you replace God's direction. The Hebrews broke that second commandment, remember? just below the mountain. Up, make us gods that will take us the way we want to go. Made that golden image. They were trying to replace God's direction with their own direction. That's the second commandment. And the third, we said, announces the audacity of taking the name of God, accepting his name, but not living up to the name and not living up to God's personal expectations of you. And the fourth commandment, we said, calls on us and all around us and all that we possess to remember the Lord who made all things. That's what we're doing today. We're remembering. And, and we learned we do this by especially keeping the seventh day of the week, which we call Saturday, holy. And we must keep it holy and the seventh because that's the way the Lord gave it to us. Remember that sermon? We got that. We got that. Well, let's get into this fifth commandment. Today I want to deal with the basic stuff honor thy father and thy mother. Now, some of you were not reared by parents like mine. See, it never crossed my mind <laughs> growing up in the home of William and Zoe Wright not to honor. That, that never entered my mind. Life was precious to me. And, and I don't recall, I don't recall, uh, 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 Patterson, my dad walking around the house saying, honor thy father. There was something about his bearing that said, that's a good commandment to observe. <laughs> Do some of you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah. In fact, I don't recall the commandment ever coming up in a worse family worship. <laughs> it was just, Cheryl, kind of there. Yeah. Honoring is something that you do. It was a survival thing. I want to begin by reading a comment from the, from, the, from, the, uh, from the SDA commentary. And here's what it says about this commandment. In so much, now listen, because this thing gets deep. In so much, as prior to the age of moral accountability, parents stand to their children as representatives of God, it is logical and fitting, the rationale continues, that our first manward duty, so remember the fifth commandment is the first commandment in the section to, 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 uh, to obey man, or rather to, to, uh, to love man. Uh, it says it is, it is logical and fitting that our first manward duty should be toward them. And then the book Patriarchs and Prophets adds, and he who rejects the rightful authority of his parents is rejecting the authority of God. My Lord, my Lord. So, 
Here's the connection that these two statements make. The first four commandments deal with our duty to God and begin with the first commandment teaching us that we must give God preference above everyone and everything. The second section of the commandments teaches our duty to man, and those six commandments also begin with teaching us to give preference to God's representatives. So in a sense, the first commandment and the fifth commandment are the same commandment in a different form. Now, we also need to understand that both these sets of commandments, the first four and the last six, duty to God and duty to man, are designed to abase human pride and self-centeredness. Now, I keep driving that home, Joan. I keep driving that home, that, that these, these, these commandments are about dealing with this thing in humanity that just wants to assert itself. Right. Assert itself and usurp God's place. And so when the Bible says, honor your parents, it's immediately teaching you something else that puts you where you ought to be, Frank. Yes. Because the essence of love is putting yourself second. Isn't that true? Yes. That's right. So honor your parents. Start there. First, first, honor God, give him preference. But now that we're dealing with your relationship with humanity, start with the two people that God assigned yes. in his place yes. to be over you. Now, unfortunately, sitting before me is a congregation full of human beings. And some of you may have never met or known your parents. You were adopted. Maybe you're someone who was reared by grandparents, uh, aunts, siblings, or some other close relative parented you. You don't know those who sired you. Somebody else here today may, may have come up uh, in the foster care system in some state due to the dysfunctional life of your parents. You could be today a child who fled from home for some reason and has never made contact with your family for years. Or you may be like my granddaughter, Michaela, whose parent predeceased her. Oh, my granddaughter knows about Mike is pictures, stories. How does that person observe the fifth commandment? So it's obvious here that this commandment is doing, is dealing with more than just because God's not going to give a commandment that no one, that anybody can't keep. So this says to me, Cheryl, that this commandment is dealing with more than just parents. Yes. It's dealing with authority. Because this group I just described, they can't honor. How are you going to honor somebody you don't know? So what's going on here, Conrad, is bigger than just the mother and father who sired you. God is, God is, is remember, the, 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 the fifth commandment is a second expression of the first commandment. And, and, and so, and so, 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 observing this commandment is more than just respecting those two people who produced you biologically. One thing is clear: God saw, and we've been pointing this out as we studied the commandments, that human beings, stay with me now, human beings need to be subject to something, because we're just good and arrogant, aren't we? Well, I have to help you. Amen. That's what you should have said. Amen. It's good and arrogant. Satan found something in human beings that he could use. We have a tendency to want to be in charge, to be unanswerable to any entity outside ourselves, and that's why the evil one, his first temptation, conveyed these words, ye shall be as gods. 
his first temptation to the human race was to remove all authority. Are you listening to me? That's where we first, Sherry, messed up. And human beings in general have authority problems to this day. And you know I'm telling the truth. I mean, you fight with it when you come up to a, to a, to a, to a stop sign. It says S-T-O-P. You can read. But you don't see nothing coming. And your mind, I ain't going to have no dumb sign have authority over me. I can see nothing is coming. I'll just slow down and turn. That's an authority moment. Because the sign don't say slow down and turn. Sign, what does the sign say, y'all? Stop. stop. You know what stop means. Put the brakes on till the thing stops moving. <laughs> then turn. So we have these, we have these things in us. That, 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 uh, 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 a lot of times at airports, they'll, they don't have those things all lined up. You got to go through all these things up and down and so forth. And you'll see people, there's not, there's not, there's not, there's not all the way out to the end. So they go underneath. <laughs> Come on, y'all. They go underneath. That's an authority moment. Have no ropes telling me I ain't going, going to go all through all that. Going under the ropes. <laughs> Come on, y'all. <laughs> I do it. I'm confessing my sins. I do it. In fact, in fact, I get an attitude. I ain't. Is the pastor telling the truth? That's an authority moment. We don't like things shaping us and lining us up and squeezing us. And Satan read this tendency in humanity. Ye, ye shall be as gods. Are you with the pastor now? You see where I'm going. So this commandment is deep. It's a deep commandment. And we're going to see that disrespect for the womb that bore you and the sperm that produced you is disrespect of the God who invented both the womb and the sperm. This is a hard commandment to observe in a world of failing sin-filled parents. Because those of us who know our parents, you know, one of the most, I, I, and I'll be honest with you, but one of the most jarring moments in life is when you get grown enough to realize your parents got a lot of flaws. Come on now. You love them, they reared you, but now as a grown person, you look back and say, mmm. <laughs> Dad had some issues here. Come on, y'all. You know you've been there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and look, some, some folk lose it. They, they, they get discouraged. They get rebellious. The fifth commandment is a difficult commandment to observe. Because even for those who know their parents, sin field, uh, and the world, the world will present you with daily justifiable cause to rationalize as to why we don't have to obey that command in the fifth law of the ten. And there are people sitting here right now saying, Pastor Wright, if you knew my drunken, abusive, philandering, lazy, foul-mouthed, never-be-there-when-I-need-them parent, you would, have, you would understand why I have no regard for them. But the first commandment and the fifth commandment are connected. And just like it can sometimes be challenging to relate to a God we've never seen, it can be challenging to relate to a parent we have seen or have not seen. How do the scriptures address it? And, 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 and much that about, about, about children and parent relationships in the Bible is kind of, it's kind of, it's kind of implied. But, 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 the, but the stuff is there, sure. You've got to look for it. You remember the incident of, in, in Genesis 9 of Noah and Ham? Remember that? Yeah. Noah was drunk. He was so drunk, he fell out naked and didn't know he was naked. 
That's how drunk he was. Now, some of you sitting here, some of you sitting here have seen your parents drunk. Drunk is not good. And yet, in spite of the condition of Noah, God took issue with Ham's disrespect of his father. Sorry, Ham. Uh-uh, that don't work here. And pronounced through Noah judgment upon Ham's descendants. Now, this is a message about how God feels about how you treat a, a parent. The man was drunk. He deserved to be, and, 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 and he laughed at his daddy. But he forgot that daddy was God's representative. So he was laughing at God. God was not happy. You remember in Genesis 19, Lot and his daughters? Remember that? He put them in that situation where they learned to respect their elders, and then after they fled from Sodom, these two young women got their father drunk and had children with him, but God was displeased with that. Remember Genesis 27, Isaac and Jacob? He lied. And, 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 and Isaac, Isaac had been, Isaac had shown favoritism against Jacob, which you think would have given Jacob justification, but uh-uh. He lied to his father and spent the next 20 years, in some ways the rest of his life paying for it, showing God's regard for a parent. And I find it amazing that Jacob, having suffered from favoritism, then himself showed favoritism between Joseph and the rest of his children. And yet when they in anger lied to their father, they spent the next 30 years in grief and fear. God has got a problem with people who disrespect parents. I don't care what the condition of the parent is. Now I'm talking to you. Because there are folks sitting in this congregation who have found justification for not treating their parents who failed. They failed. Let's face it, they, they weren't there, they were drunken, they didn't take care of you, they didn't attend any graduations, and you've got an attitude. God says, just a minute. Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. Because you see, in the commandment, there are no adjectives. No. Honor thy father. The word good does not appear. The word nice does not appear. Nor lovely. Honor thy father and thy mother, period. I don't care what you say, Pastor. I just ain't going to do it. That's all right. Hell will be fat with people who didn't get this one. And I'm not saying that to be sleight of hand or to be cynical. The human race needs authority. It's just yes. how we are. And so, and so, and so, uh, all through the Bible, uh, you, you'll notice in Genesis 49, remember when Jacob speaks about all his sons? Uh, 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 um, God, God, gives, God gives parents wisdom about children. My mother, my mother used to, used to bake, bake uh, chocolate chip cookies. Now, I don't know why you're smiling, because you never tasted it. A chocolate chip cookie made by my mama. Them boys would call to you from the oven. <laughs> and the rules were clear. The rules were clear. Kept, do you remember the big owl where my, where, 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 where my mother kept, yes, kept the cookie. She'd make them and put them in the big owl where the head came off. <laughs> now, here's the way mom was. Don't mind knowing your children now. I know what I'm talking about, knowing your children. Here's the way mom was. She put the fresh baked cookies in the owl. You can have as many cookies as you want, but you got to ask. But when you have cookies calling, Henry, Henry. Y'all laughing, this thing is real, Henry. And mom is outside working in the yard, and I'm in the kitchen, Henry, 
So I go, I go, and see, I didn't know how well mom knew me. She knew she was staying in the yard. Come on. Jacob named the characteristics of all these children. She's staying in the yard till I get up on that chair and take <laughs> that, that. And there's something about a mother's eyes. You can feel them on your back. And I'm. <laughs> Death is at the door. <laughs> You don't care if you never see another cookie, let alone eat one. Are you listening to me? Jacob named. She knew. And she'd just smile. She'd be standing there, and she'd stand there, and she'd pat. And of course, how much of a whipping you were going to get depended upon the pace of the patting. <laughs> she pat real fast. It's over, Doc. <laughs> yeah, it's over. My point is, she knew her children. Jacob knew these children. What I'm saying to you, there is, a, 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 and I know this from counseling, sometimes if I can help a person to go back and understand their parent, I can help them understand themselves. There is a wisdom that comes from the parent to the child. We see that in Genesis 49. And then, of course, Deuteronomy 21. Here's a good one. Deuteronomy 21. This, because <laughs> I, I, I chuckle every time I read this text. And when the world is what happened in my house. Genesis 21. Did I say Deuteronomy? Well, you're all listening to me, aren't you? Good. Deuteronomy 21. Yeah, verse 18. If a man have a stubborn and rebellious son, read child there, which will not obey the voice of his father or the voice of his mother, and that when they have chastised him, he will not hearken unto them. Got a whipping, still went on and did what he wanted to do. Then shall his father and mother lay hold on him and bring him out unto the elders of the city and to the gate of his place. And they shall say unto the elders of the city, this our son is stubborn and rebellious. He will not obey our voice. He is a glutton and a drunkard. And the men of his city shall stone him with stones. And every time I read this, I smile. Because if this had been my home, my mother would have come for the elders carrying my dead body. <laughs> Just want you to know, <laughs> there's one less in the camp today. We don't need to call no elders <laughs> and have no assembly. We've taken care of it in the tent. <laughs> but that's how serious they were. That's how serious they were. I want you to get the deepness of this commandment. And now let me talk to you out of my heart. One of the things that's bothering the Holy Spirit is that the Christian church has lost a sense of seriousness about the issue of parenting. Parenting is one of the most serious things you'll ever do. Brian, to parent a child. Here they come, blank. The cerebral cortex is smooth. There are no convolutions there yet. And to impress, to have that, that ability to impress yourself, your background, your beliefs, your values into the mind of a child. And then the commandment speaks to the child and says, even if it wasn't done right, even if mistakes were made, you got to honor this because I brought you into the world through them. And no matter what you think of them, I use them. I'll deal with them. But they're my instruments. And of course, then in, and then in Proverbs 15, 20, if a person despises their mother, he is foolish. And Mark 7, 11, we're to provide for our parents in the old age. And then, of course, that famous text, Ephesians 6, 1, Obey your parents as unto the Lord. The word honor means high regard, respect, a position of high rank, to show courtesy. Synonyms are homage, reverence, and deference. Why the word honor and not the word love?
As I looked it up in the Hebrew, this word honor embraces all that love can convey. But the word honor is used because there is a reverence. There is a reverence in the word honor that's not quite apparent in the word love. And so God expects us to honor. And then, of course, God goes in the Bible further and likens himself to a parent. Remember that? Psalm 103, like as a father. And then Isaiah 40, 49, a, 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 a mother may forget her suckling child, but I will not forget thee. And now we understand why Satan, understanding the place that parents were to have in human society, has worked with diligence to corrupt the function. So many failed parents, absentee parents, resulting in compounded generations of people who have more and more, who have more and more people who do not like, love, or even know their parents. And then some of those people go further and blame God. Children born out of wedlock, children born of rape, incest, and casual acts of sex. Children are reared with parents whose life failures are constantly shoved on their children. And yet, in spite of all these conundrums, the commandment says, honor. You're finally getting it. To keep this commandment requires a converted Christian. You don't just slide into this commandment. And there are people sitting here who spent years of your life in untold agonies and maybe even sicknesses because you have not resolved this issue. I've sat in my office and listened to people with anger talk about how they were not protected by the parents. They knew that their brother was molesting them. They knew that the grandfather was molesting them. They knew that the person coming, and my parents did not protect me. And with trembling bitterness, they tell me their story. But God's commandment stands their honor. It takes a converted Christian, I'm going to say it one more time, to obey the fifth commandment. Because it hits you in a very tender relationship. It hits you right where you are. It hits you right where you live. And the commandment will not let you escape the demand of God. And he takes no time. There's no text to Zama where he clearly explains why you must do this. He just says, do it. He says, do it. Permit me now to go to the commentary and address the final issue. And I've implied it already. Another purpose of this commandment, the commentary says, is to engender respect for all rightful authority. Such respect begins with the attitude of children toward their parents. In other words, what the commentary is saying is that show me a child that consistently shows disrespect for their parents, and I'll show you a child who probably is going to have insubordination issues with everybody else. Are you with me? So true. So true. And I, I can see it in some of the young people in the church. Amen. The way they react to me sometimes, I know is that the way they react to you. The only difference is I don't take that. <laughs> and the young folk in this church know I love them, but they know don't, don't, don't mess with pastor. When I say move, M-O-V-E, doesn't need a definition. It means you here, get there. And some of us have copped out. And folk, it does not work. It does not work. It does not work. See, Patriarch and Prophet says the fifth commandment requires children not only to yield respect, submission, and obedience to their parents, it also enjoins respect for ministers and rulers of all, for all others to whom God has de delegated authority. Yes. And again, see, my, my, my parents were, 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 were firm there. I remember the first time I got sent home for insubordination. I didn't know what the word meant. <laughs> but mom read the note, she knew what it meant. She said, oh, you're getting out of place with the teachers. 
Oh, I thought my mind said, oh, that's what it means, out of place. <laughs> well, I knew what that meant. And some of you remember, parents, that if you got in trouble with another adult, you got a whip, you got two whippings. How many, so, am, am I know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Yeah. If you got out of place with an adult, you want to keep that thing right there. Let it stay in Las Vegas. We don't let that thing come here. Because if that thing gets to Germantown, Ohio, there's going to be trouble in the camp. And I remember later on saying to a, to a teacher, I said, now, and I was like, I got because that was back in the days when they you, you could still get a spanking in school, and I got, got, got a spanking. And I said to him, his name was, the name, I won't call his name, because he may have relatives listening in. <laughs> I said, I said, I said, I said, I said uh, and he, he, he really swatted me. I said, now, are we settled? He said, I was in eighth grade. He said, are we settled? He said, what do you mean? I said, can we just keep this? <laughs> do, we need to, do we need to follow up with a note or anything like that? <laughs> so he smiled. He said, no, young man. He said, it's between us. I said, that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> I almost wanted to say to him, hit me one more time, but, you know. <laughs> the child that habitually displays disrespect for parents can become, in some cases, the murderer at an elementary school, first killing the parent and then destroying ruthlessly the lives of innocent and then attacking the authorities that subdue him. Somewhere in the life of that boy, a parent forgot their responsibility. Be careful of forming the habit of negotiating obedience. Ain't no such thing as you gonna do if you if if you do if you do what mommy asks, then you're gonna get a piece of pie. No, sir. No, sir. My mother had one for that. <laughs> you don't do what I ask. After I beat you, you're going to bed with no meal. <laughs> but it was clear. See, the parameters were clear. And even though I look back, I used to think mom and dad, I look back now, I thank God for them. Everything was clear. You act up in church on Sabbath, the sun sets, you better pray for the longest Sabbath you've ever experienced in your life. You want to be Joshua, Lord, hold the sun. Because <laughs> when it goes down, all Hades is going to break out here in this place. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? <laughs> See, I can smile about these things now. But looking back, these things did me good. Yes. And so I told you about my son, Hank, in the Marines, in the Marines. Sergeant was watching him, watching him. Finally said to him, said, uh, said, uh, said, you don't seem to have any problem with authority. And Hank said, if you met my father, <laughs> you have to send an early message not threats and intimidation, but a firm kind of love that says, this far and no further. And you can't be weak of heart. As they get older, you, it, 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 it's, 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 like, it's, like, it's like Obama does with the, with, with the Iranians. He's never taken off the table the possibility that we're going to bomb them out of existence. Just leave it out there. And as they get older, you have to leave that possibility. You can't make it here, you're going to make it out there. But you're not going to stay here in this house and disrespect me. Now, you know like I know, you don't want to do that, but you can't take that off the table. I believe that every parent should pray for the wisdom to talk and reason with a child as a first act of discipline. Yes. I believe that every parent should use their heart before they use their hand yes. and provide punishments that are restraining and not necessarily corporal, if that works. Yes. Well, children are different. There is the child who doesn't want any spankings, and they do as they're told. Then there's the child that says, hmm, oh yeah? 
See, I was one of those. I was that second group. I'm going to test you. Yeah. Yeah. And those bruises I got along the way did me good. Because <laughs> mom never failed the test. <laughs> A child must be taught to respect authority. The Apostle Paul wrote, let every man be subject to the higher powers. Whosoever therefore resisteth, resisteth the ordinance of God. For he is a minister of God to thee for good. For he is the minister of God, a revenger to execute wrath upon them that doeth evil. Wherefore ye must needs be subject, not only for wrath, but also for conscience sake. Obeying the fifth commandment prepares you and your children to respect authority. The day will not come when humanity is not subject to some power that is of God. And so here's where you do your parent, do your children a favor. They are always going to be under somebody. Come on now. First under you. Come on now. Then under a boss. Under a sergeant. And if they don't learn, under a cop. Under a warden. See, that's one of the glories of marriage. Marriage allows you still to be subject to somebody else. No, I, 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 no, 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 I'm not, I'm not being funny. Marriage keeps you from being a self-centered bum who thinks everything's got to go their way. Marriage teaches you balance and sharing. No human being can survive on this planet without being subject to something beyond themselves. Yes. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. After this study, we should understand why faithfully observing the fifth commandment promises long life. It is the first commandment that deals with God, our human relationships applied to our Creator. If we observe the first commandment, putting God first, our days will be long because we'll inherit eternal life. Amen. The fifth commandment is assuring us that the person who honors their parents in spite of can also be entrusted with eternal life. See, when you can honor somebody in spite of how they are, you can be trusted in the kingdom of glory. But there's a deeper insinuation here. It is possible that the person whose life is eaten away with the stress of poor or absent parental relationships, if that person doesn't deal with that, it can eat away at them in this world and shorten their days of life. Folk, resentment is a killer. And some of you sitting here holding unresolved resemblance against your parents, you may be justified in terms of what they did in your mind, but that poison is shortening your days on this life. You got to give that poison up. You got to find some altar somewhere and put that thing there. You got to turn that thing loose. Because if they were that evil, are they worth you losing your soul and your life over? Victory is being able to say, I give it to God. Can I get a witness in this place? Amen. But you say, Pastor, there's a question you raised at the beginning of the sermon. How does the person who's never known, how does the person who was ill-treated, in this morning's reading in the book, Jesus Calling, the answer was there. Bring me the sacrifice. And you know the book is written as if Jesus is talking to you. Bring me the sacrifice of thanksgiving, the author writes. Take nothing for granted, not even the rising of the sun. Before Satan tempted Eve on the Garden of Eden, thankfulness was as natural as breathing. Satan's temptations, he writes, involve pointing Eve to the one thing bidden her. The garden was filled with luscious, desirable fruits, but Eve focused on the fruit she couldn't have. Rather than being thankful for the many good things freely available. 
the negative focus darkened her mind. Did what? Darkened. Did what? Darkened. I'm talking to that person who really had some sorry parents or didn't know them. And she succumbed to temptation. When you focus on what you don't have or on situations that displease you, your mind becomes darkened. You may have had bad parents, but you're here alive today. Come on now. You may have had bad parents, but you're eating food today. You got clothes today. It may not have been right the way they treated you, but you can focus on that or you can focus on the fact that God woke you up this morning. Kept you in a right mind. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The only answer for that child, that person, that person, listen to me on this uh, over the airways right now. The only, the only hope for you, if it didn't go right between you and your parents, don't focus, don't let your mind become darkened. Thank God for what you can thank Him for. I have hope. I have a Savior. I have the Word. I have the church. I have friends. Because some things, folk, some things you can't change. But if God let it happen, if God let it, if God permitted that thing to happen, y'all, then even though you think it was so unfair, God saw in you a strength you don't think you had. As that one person said to me many years ago, why did I get stuck with bad parents? Because God saw they could handle it. And now my next response is going to sound real rough. So handle it. Rise above it. And be the person that God created you to be in spite of. There's the commandment. I wish, Cheryl, it was written differently. But after studying it for two weeks, I've decided it may be the most difficult commandment of the ten to keep. So I beseech you today, as a child, honor parenthood. I appeal to you today to pray for the strength to find love and forgiveness for the failed parent, the absent parent. I beseech you today to ask God to quell in you the spirit of insubordination toward authority in general. I ask you today to pray for the humility demanded of you in order to obey one of the most challenging of the Ten Commandments. Something good, something purifying, something cleansing can happen for you if you honor your father and your mother. Amen. Amen.
that was a sermon that needed to be preached, wasn't it? So I just want to visit with you for a moment. I don't necessarily know how this sermon touched you, where it entered into your life. I bleed, I bleed for us because as we will see in my follow-up sermon, Satan has been so successful in just distorting the family, hasn't he? I don't know, Jim Hammond, what we would do without the grace of God. I don't know of anybody who comes from a perfect family. And yet, most of us, yea, all of us, by his grace, are going to one day walk on streets of gold. Isn't that something? So take a moment. Take a moment and think about mom and dad. But I don't know him, Pastor. Take a moment. Think about mom and dad. Because ever how they touched your life, they represent God's reach toward you. You see, think, think about the child who was born from parents they never knew, maybe were out of wedlock, maybe the result of rape. And yet, in spite of that unfortunate act, here you are, which means that God decided, I want you born. Now, you can spend the rest of your life worrying about how you got here, or you can bask in the sunshine of, I want you born. <laughs> it's your choice. Celebrate your life. Just celebrate your life. Not how it began, just celebrate your life. I'm here. God brought me here. And thinking that no matter how you began, you got a say on how you end. You got a say in it. Had nothing to do with your beginning, but you got all kind of decisions to make about your ending. Buck up today and decide you're going to end in the face of Jesus. Think about your parents. Bow your heads. Bow your heads. Father, Deanna singing the right song, have thine own way. Mold me, make me. <laughs> keep, keep, keep working on this clay. For the sermon has two sections. <laughs> Honoring the parent, one, and being the parent I should be, two. Either way, Lord, talk to us. Give me the next verse, Dion. for speaking to us in this message. I'm just going to, I'm, I'm just going to kind of let people sort it out in their own heads. I'm not going to make an appeal about being a better parent or making an appeal about loving my parents in spite of. I'm not going to make that kind of appeal. Just let, Holy Ghost, you just let folks sort it out. Whatever the sermon said to them, let them sort it out in their own heads. But here's what I want to get to. No matter born of great parents, <laughs> or born from folk you don't even know, you're here. And you and God aren't right. And you know it. But I want to particularly speak to that person who's been attending here and has not yet gotten up and walked down the aisle. 
Remember we said that you may not have any control over your beginning, but you can sure have influence on the ending. You need to come forward to take Bible studies. You need to come forward to prepare for baptism. You need to come forward to make a fresh start. And you got an opportunity right now. The song says you're going to give it to God, have your own way. So if the Lord brought you here today to come to him, let him have his way now. Let me repeat it again. You need to come forward for Bible studies. You need to come forward to make a fresh start. You need to come forward to prepare for baptism. You need to come forward. If that's your need. If there's not another verse, Dion, then repeat a verse. Let's see who will come forward. You're praying. Who will come? Let's just wait and see. Let's just wait and see. You're praying, church. Remember, your part's to pray. God's Spirit is working. Let's just see if somebody will just move for the Lord. Oh, I love this part of the service. All the dynamics going on in these pews, somebody wrestling with the Holy Spirit. Will you let God win today? If you're downstairs, you can come up. Balcony, you can come down. Another room, you can come forward down the center aisle. I pray someone can still slip up and come. But I just thank you for the word. I thank you for the simplicity of it and the depth of it at the same time. Ah, uh, we'll go home today with some things to think about. Getting ready for part two. But I want to praise God for your plan. Fathers and mothers producing children. Interesting approach. You could have just kept making us out of the dirt like you did Adam and Eve, ribs, whatever, but you decided to do it this way. Help us, Lord. We, we, we want to do right. We want to be right. We want to overcome whatever corruptions in the process that affected our life. So help us. Stay by us. Help us. Keep our chins up. Help somebody to settle something today. Maybe, maybe somebody listening or sitting here will go home and make a phone call. I don't know. Maybe they will. I pray to that end. Thank you for the word. In Jesus' name. I said in Jesus' name. The people said amen. Are you glad you were in church today? Well, you want to hear part two. Hear part two. God bless. Most surely I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it produces much grain. He who loves his life will lose it. He who hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. 
The life spent on self is like the grain that is eaten. It disappears, but there is no increase. A man may gather all he can for self. He may live and think and plan for, for self. But his life passes away, and he has nothing. The law of self-serving is a law of self-destruction. It's out of ages, page 624. The elders will now call for the tithe and offering. Let's think about somebody else outside of self and give to the Lord as he has given to you. faith and curse on to a safe place in your arms. Keep these gifts that we have given to you safe, dear Father God, until they're to be used to further the gospel. In Jesus' name, amen. If this has been a blessed Sabbath, say amen. amen. Uh, it's always wonderful to be in the house of the Lord. Before we um, have our closing um, song and dismiss, I wanted to raise one um, special request, and that's uh, Tracy Hermanstein has a coworker that she um, was talking with this week, and uh, this woman is a scientist, and they've found a tumor in her body, and uh, so she's asked for prayer, and Tracy said that her church congregation would lift her up. Now, if you, if you look at the statistics and different people say different things, there's a vast majority of scientists that don't believe that God exists. So I'm really thankful that this woman reached out to Tracy 
And I want to take a moment now to ask our creator God, who will create and sustain, to be with this woman. Her name is Miss Meredith. Can we all just bow our heads? Heavenly Father, Lord, we know you have all things in your hands, Lord, and we know that there is a reason why this request came in, and we ask you to be with Miss Meredith and to show her your love and your kindness in everything you are going to do for her. It's my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Elder. Um, a search committee made up of churches and uh, parents and young people themselves and the pastoral team will be interviewing a young pastor, a potential youth pastor for CPC. So I'd appreciate you remembering that and praying at 12 tomorrow that God will guide us in that deliberation. With that in mind, if you know you're a part of that search committee, I'd like for you to stop by the office. Uh, come on up, Danita, because you're next in my announcements. I'd like uh, for you to come by the office before you leave church and pick up your folder that you might be prepared for tomorrow. Sister Danita Andrews is our church clerk. In the transition between her and our previous clerk, um, Sister Teresa Garns, some of our requests for transfers kind of got lost in the process. It wasn't her fault, it wasn't Teresa's fault, just uh, things didn't get trans transferred over on the computer. So if you've had a frustrating time getting transferred, this is our clerk. Say hi, clerk. Hi. She's the lady in charge. And so if you see her walking around and you've had a problem, she doesn't mind you coming to her and she'll get right on it and catch up, see what's going on and so forth. So I thought, I just want you to know who this is. This is the clerk. Who is this? The clerk. And she's the person who handles transfers and she'll do that for you. Thank you, Tanita. Elders, I'll meet with you this coming Tuesday at 7, and then, of course, we continue with our prayer meeting study on the great characters of the Bible as we meet uh, on Wednesday evening at 7 o'clock. I was hoping uh, to get a report from how many folk attended service in Dulles today as a follow-up, but we couldn't make contact with anyone, so uh, we're just praying earnestly that uh, those who came will continue to come. Would you join us in that prayer? That those who came will continue to come. Great having you today. It's going to be kind of pleasant this afternoon. Maybe a good uh, time to get out and just kind of enjoy a Sabbath and remember that it is the Sabbath until the sun sets. <laughs> I said that in love. Let's stand together as we close our service.